Warning. The following content may contain scenes of coarse language, violence, blood and gore, drugs and alcohol, sexuality, and other mature material that may not be suitable for anyone under the age of 20. Viewer and parental discretion is strongly advised. Warning. The following video is protected under Fair Deal Law of Canada and Fair Use Law of the United States of America. All material used in the making of this video is transformative and is strictly for the purposes of entertainment. Any attempt at removal, hiding, algorithmically, manually, or otherwise, and or censorship of any kind will result in extreme legal force. This is your one and only warning. Do not try it. Last time on Spyro the Dragon. No, 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 wait, 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 no! Well, this ain't a familiar situation. I never imagined that I would end up making the same mistake not once, but twice! And now, the adventure continues. Yo, what's happening gamers? This is your captain, Carbine speaking, and welcome back to Spyro the Dragon. In the last episode, we took out Metalhead and liberated the swamps of the Beastmaker's world from Nasty Nork's control. And in this episode, we're going to be continuing our adventures by making our way to the Dreamweaver's world. Welcome to the wondrous and whimsical Dreamweaver's world, where not everything is as it seems. For magic in this realm can change anything and everything on a whim, making more heavily armored enemies more difficult to deal with. So you're going to have to wait until they change back to their small size before taking them down. As for unarmored enemies though, they're easy to deal with either way. Another thing to note is that we will also find jokers and jesters running all across the Dreamweaver's world that have the power to change the environment and enemies at will. And even though they can't exactly be destroyed, we should attack them when we get the chance. We may see something interesting when we do. As you can see, there is a small floating island where there is an enemy firing a magical cannon that is changing the size of enemies. As I've stated before, some armored enemies we can't take down right away, but for others, we just have to be patient until they shrink down to their regular size. Then we can take them down. Heading over to the right, we'll be able to gain some treasure. And heading up the stairs, we will also find the portal to the boss, as well as the balloonist. But we won't be going to either of those just yet. Gliding our way across, we'll be able to gain some more treasure, as well as rescue the first dragon of the area, Latif. But we also need to be aware of the small fairy that's waiting for us behind the corner. Welcome to the Dreamweavers, young one. While chasing Nasty's minions in this world, you must expect the unexpected and prepare for what is not there. After rescuing Latif, all we gotta do is light the fireworks and collect the treasure there. Now it's about time I think we head over to that floating island with the magic cannon that I mentioned earlier. Now all we gotta do is glide our way across and take out those two fairies, <laughs> then hop on top of the whirlwind platforms and glide our way across to the floating island. Ah! 
now that we've gotten control of the cannon, I think it's about time we shrunk some enemies down to size. Now, we just glide our way across and take care of the enemies at the stairs. Heading up the stairs, we'll be able to glide our way across to the tower, where we will find some treasure, a couple of jesters running around, an extra life, and a little secret hidden behind the wall. Now at this point, we will roast both jesters so we can raise the platforms, so we can head on over to the floating islets, where we will find a bonus level, but we won't do that just yet. Now we will head back near the area with the magic cannon and rescue our next dragon, Zikomo. Hello, Sparrow. Nicely done. I'll be done when I've toasted that nasty Nork. One step at a time, Spyro. First, we gotta make our way across and... I got no excuses for this at this point. And I really couldn't make this up even if I tried. Alright, fortunately Zoe saved our progress after we rescued Tacoma. Now all we gotta do is glide our way across carefully and take out the enemies on the floating island. I'm guessing this enemy grew back to his big size after we respawned, so we're gonna have to deal with him a bit later. Heading through the tunnel here, we'll be able to gain ourselves some treasure, roast a little fairy boy, and rescue the last dragon of the area, Mazi. Also, roasting the jester will lower the platform, and we'll be able to gain back an extra life that we have lost. you see in this world are invincible, but that does not mean they shouldn't be attacked. Sounds alright to me. As redundant as that is, we have now rescued all of the dragons in the Dreamweaver's world, and all that's left to do now is just find the rest of the treasure in this area. We know where one of the gems is located considering the fact that we couldn't take down a certain armored enemy earlier. But with the help of the magic cannon, we'll be able to take down that armored enemy no problem.
Now all we gotta do is head back through the tunnel and look behind the wall on the right and we'll be able to find the rest of the gems there. And that's it! The Dreamweaver's world is now complete. Now it's about time we head on over to the first level. Welcome to Dark Passage. Here in the nightmarish realm of the Dark Passage, the fools use the magic from their lanterns to turn small creatures into terrifying monsters. But a quick flame breath against the fools should revert these monsters back to their original form. Coming around the corner, we should see a couple of small puppies, but don't let them fool you, as there's a fool waiting around the corner with his lantern, waiting to turn those puppies, as well as a small turtle, into terrifying monsters. Taking the whirlwind upwards, we'll be able to rescue our first dragon, Cassia. The enemies here can be quite frightening, but you should watch the fools. I'd rather flame the fools. Now you're thinking. I like the way he thinks, Spyro. But now we have to deal with a new enemy, the imps. These devilish little creatures will float around and use their flaming bow and arrows to try and shoot us. But a quick flame breath should take them down. Up ahead, there are some more fools for us to flame as well as some monsters, but we already know how to deal with them. After taking out an imp as well as a couple of puppies, we'll be able to rescue our next dragon, Azizi. Thank you for releasing me! Not a problem, Azizi. Up ahead, we have some more monsters as well as some fools for us to take down. At the other side of the gap, there will be an imp waiting to shoot us, as well as a locked treasure chest, but we'll be able to deal with that a bit later. Across the gap from the platform that we are on, there will be a monster that is blocking our path, as well as a fool with a lantern hiding just behind him, but if we time our jump properly, we should be able to get past them. There are a couple of imps looking to shoot us down from the platform across the other side, but we should be able to take them down no problem, as well as pick up an extra life. And heading up the spiraling platform, we should be able to rescue our next dragon, Bakari. You know, I think you just might be the dragon to defeat Nasty Nork. That's me, alright. We'll be able to take on Nasty Nork all in due time. But first, there's a few things that we need to complete within this level. For starters, from the top of this platform, we should be able to see a small gap that we should be able to jump down and glide towards. Up ahead, there will be an imp, as well as a couple of dogs and a couple of turtles for us to get rid of.
after defeating the enemies and collecting the treasure in this area. Beyond the abyss, there is a small gap in the wall where there will be a bunch of enemies waiting for us, including a fool and a couple of turtle monsters. I didn't know fireballs could curve behind walls like that. Anyway, if we time our approach correctly, we can slip in between the turtle monsters and flame the fool and take out the rest of the enemies. Heading up the whirlwind, there will be a bunch of enemies waiting for us, as well as some treasure and the next dragon of the level, Apara. Thanks, Spyro. I'd love to help you catch Nasty, but I'd really hate to be trapped in Crystal again. Don't worry. The only one that's going to be trapped is him. No worries, Apara. Up ahead, there will be some monsters waiting for us along a winding staircase, as well as a bunch of treasure for us to collect. On the platform up ahead, there will be three puppies looking to chomp down on us. But we should be able to flame them and make some roasted hot dogs. Following the trail of treasure ahead should lead us to the last dragon of the level, Obasi. Thank you for releasing me. And that's it! All of the dragons within the Dark Passage have been found. Now all that's left to do is just collect the rest of the treasure. Gliding our way across the abyss, we will come to a room with a bunch of enemies, as well as some treasure for us to collect. Heading up the whirlwind, we will find a trail of treasure that will lead to a firework that will blow open that locked treasure chest that we found earlier. And once we have collected all of the treasure, that's it! The level is now complete, and we can now head back to the Dreamweaver's world.
Ah, oh, very clever. But you should know that cheap shots and sneak attacks can only get you so far. Now that we have completed the Dark Passage, I think it's about time we head on over to the second level of the Dreamweaver's world. Welcome to Lofty Castle. Here on the floating islands of the Lofty Castle, we will encounter many wondrous creatures such as Big Arbor Norks floating with balloons? That's right folks, we're dealing with Norks again, on top of all of the other enemies that we have to face. However, this level is actually quite simple, as it revolves around gliding from platform to platform, while riding the occasional whirlwind here and there. There's also some fairies for us to rescue, that will help us reach far off places that we can't reach by ourselves. However, we'll get to them very very soon. While gliding over to the next platform to rescue our first fairy, we discover that yes, the imps are back! So we should try to avoid getting shot by their flaming arrows while we roast them to a crisp. Making our way up, we'll be rescuing our second fairy while collecting some treasure along the way. Now all we gotta do is glide over to the next floating island to rescue the third fairy while popping the balloon that's keeping the armored nork afloat. The three rescued fairies will now use their combined magic to create a whirlwind that will help us glide over to the main castle area where we will rescue the first dragon of the level, Mugada. Fairies are always on your side, Spyro. Indeed, they have been quite helpful throughout our journey. And we have to rescue even more in this area over here, and there's going to be some imps guarding the cages. Huh! The imp just shot the cage! That makes our job a whole lot easier! There should be another fairy guarded by an imp in the back area over here. As we head underneath the bridge, we will find the third fairy in this area that we need to rescue, as well as a locked treasure chest and an extra life. But we need a key in order to open up that locked treasure chest. In the backyard of the lofty castle, we will find even more enemies, gems, some fairies for us to rescue, and the next dragon of the level, Bariti. Thank 
thank you for releasing me. No problem, Baruki. Now at this point, we can rescue three fairies that will use their power to create a whirlwind that will take us to the end of the level. But we're not gonna go there just yet. Instead, we're gonna head towards the tower, as there's some important stuff that we need to do there. At the end of the staircase, there will be an extra life for us to collect, and upon entering the tower, there will be a whirlwind that will take us up to another floor of the tower. And from that floor, we'll be able to free another set of three fairies while popping the balloons of some norks along the way. Now that we have cleared out the treasure from the bottom floor of the tower, we can ride the whirlwind created by the fairies to reach the top of the tower to collect some more treasure, a key, and rescue the last dragon of the level, Useni. Ah, Spyro, thanks. Supercharge will get you to new places here in Lofty Castle, too. See where it takes you. Now that we have rescued all of the dragons of this level, we can now focus on collecting the rest of the treasure. From here, we can ride the Supercharge track all the way back to the main area of the castle. It should be a simple and fairly easy jump to make. Simple and fairly easy, I think. And yet for some reason, I still somehow managed to screw it up. Okay, let's try this again and take the supercharged track to get to the main area of the castle. Without failing this time. Now that we're back in the main area, we can drop down to where we found that locked treasure chest using the key that we found at the top of the tower when we rescued Useni. And right after jumping from the supercharge ramp, we should land on a grassy balcony where there's some fireworks that we can light up in order to gain some treasure. After all that, we can now finally take the whirlwind in the backyard to reach the final area of the level. As soon as we land on the platform, we will come across a winding bridge with a bunch of treasure and some imps that are looking to shoot us. <laughs> At the end of the winding bridge, we can jump from this platform and we can glide our way down to the last of the floating islands. Oh God! Here no! in this area, no! we will rescue no! the last three fairies and use the whirlwind to reach the end of the level and collect the last remaining bit of treasure.
And that's it! The lofty castle is now complete. Now we can head on home back to the Dreamweaver's world. Now that we have completed the first two levels of the Dreamweaver's world, I think we will end things off here for now. Next time on Spyro the Dragon, we will be continuing our adventures in the Haunted Towers. This is your Captain Carbine, signing out.